Well, welcome to the Bible and breakfast or Bible and lunch, whatever time you're coming. We're going to have a special time as it's all the Word of God, so that means it's all special and it's for you and me. God's love is special. He's really in love for all of us. Let's take a moment and bow before we go any farther. Almighty God, thank you that you care for your people. You love your people. We thank you that you catch our tears. Thank you that you give us strength, hope. And you're leading us and making us and coming back for us when you're ready. Lead us now this morning, we ask in Jesus Christ's name, amen. All right, the way of hope, hope way. Hope is so important. It's often overlooked by us in the Bible. We often hear these three words in the Bible, faith, hope, and charity, or faith, hope, and love, right? We had it, faith, hope, and charity. All three, but we hear of faith and love more frequently than we do of hope. Yet there are many important and helpful references given to us about hope here in the scriptures. That is, excluding that which does not come of God, simply one's desires like, I hope so. You know, we hear that. We may say it ourselves. Somebody's asked a question about us, is this, and you say, oh, I hope so. But this is entirely different. This hope is the power and the presence of God. The scripture has much to say for us about hope. So let's continue. Let's get some hope help. God's word clearly calls us to hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering in Hebrews 10:33 hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering no matter what happens it means we are hoping and that's the hoping in the power and expression of God almighty so again hear this because of the question that follows God's word clearly calls us to hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, Hebrews 10.33. Now, could you say you do this regularly, holding fast the confession of our hope without wavering? Someone said we hold fast our hope because, it's kind of funny, we hold fast our hope because hope keeps us tied to the heavenly altar so we don't wiggle off. Tied to the heavenly altar, so we don't wiggle off. One man in Psalm 42, 5, apparently slipped off, but returned saying, why am I so troubled? Oh, I will put my hope in God, and once again I will praise him, my Savior and my God. Another man's hope was already there, and he declared, you are my Lord, my Lord, O God, and I will hope continually. Those are in Psalm 71, 5 and 14. I will hope continually. It's something wonderful that God has given to us, but seldom used. Hope is a rope. Hope is a rope from us all the way, this rope to glory, the glory of God, the presence of God, but it means we're tied there. We're fixed there in Him. The Hebrew for hope is rope and reminds us that God really wants us tied to heaven with confidence. Another emphasis on hope is that it is that which anchors us, as in Hebrews 6, 19, quote, this hope we have as an anchor of the soul, a hope both sure and steadfast and one which enters within the veil. Still, hope is unseen. Well, the word says, hope seen is not hope. For why does one still hope when one sees? But if we have hope 
for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. That's in Romans 8.24. Again, if we have hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. That's eagerly wait. That means expecting a hope that expects. Abraham, he's a great example of hope for contrary to hope. Contrary to hope. This is the word written of him. Contrary to hope, in hope believed so that he became a father of many nations. Notice that. Contrary to hope, in hope he believed. So it, in the natural didn't see that, seem there was any hope. But he believed anyway. That's the kind of belief that God wants us to have in hope. A hope that we know, that we know we're, it's going to happen. Whatever, we, we don't know the, necessarily what, in fact, with hope, we don't know particularly what, what's going to happen. We just know that we know God's going to take care of this somehow. So Abraham is a great example. Contrary to hope, in hope he believed so that he became a father of many nations. Now contrary to hope here means contrary to human expectation, but not so in God. We know what it is to have a hope that's contrary to human expectation. It, it, it doesn't seem possible. This is something, no, it can't seem possible. But it's not that way in God. All things are possible with God. So we continue. Faith is in the present and hope. Get this, because one builds on the other. Faith is in the present. Hope is in the future. See, the hope is on the stability of faith. Faith is first, then Upon faith, we can have something that takes us all the way in the presence of God. Hope. Thus, if no faith, there will be no future in hope. Derek Prince explains it this way. Hope is based on faith and faith on his word. Hope based on faith looks to the future. Any not based on faith Faith and his word is wishful thinking. Thank you, Derek, who's already gone to be with his, our father, his father. This hope we have is an anchor of the soul. Do, do you know that? Hebrews tells us this. Do you? This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast fast and which enters with the presence that's a presence of God behind the veil. That's we go in this way where the forerunner has entered for us. Who's the forerunner that entered in the presence of God? Jesus Christ. Hebrews 6, 19 to 20. Our anchor is really Jesus. He's our anchor. All right, soul safety. In the Old Testament, one pursued by an avenger of blood could flee to the horns of the altar for refuge, and no one could put him away. For us, however, fleeing for refuge to the horns of the altar differs in that we flee for refuge at the horn of God. When fears come, we may go to the altar of hope, which is in God. Fleeing suggests urgency, so if forces are gathering against us, we are able to flee to the altar in the eternal realm of God who is reaching out to us. We get into all kinds of trouble. We try to fix that. And we get worried about how we can't do this and this happen. And there is God reaching out to us. Oh, what a Savior He is. Now, 
listen to this about hope and Rahab. I don't know if you remember about Rahab, but we're going to touch on part of her experience. Another meaning of hope in the Old Testament is tikva. Hope in the Old Testament is called tikva. It's, and it's expectation. It's eagerly anticipating. It's to hope for, to wait or look hopefully for in a particular direction. All this is about tikva, the meaning of that word, which is hope again. As we noted earlier, its original meaning was to stretch like a rope. Hope is a rope. To stretch like a rope. Rahab was instructed to tie a scarlet tikva, which she wouldn't have called hope, but so she was instructed to tie a scarlet tikva in her window as her hope for rescue. God himself is the hope of the godly, and we can call out to him in hope for rescue, knowing that our hope in God will rise to him in the highest places. Hope is a rope. We're tied to him in the highest places. Finally, hope and you and me. Now about the God of hope, or may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. How? How? In believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit imparts not only spiritual gifts to the believer, but what we've learned here this morning, also joy and peace and hope. The Holy Spirit gives joy, peace, and hope, the part that we often overlook. Hope is confidence in God about what is coming and in His love. The Spirit is giving us confidence in hoping. So important. I hope we're receiving this. We want to close with these words about hope from 1 Peter 1.3. And it says there, and hopefully it says to you and me, we're open, receiving it, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His great mercy has called us to be born again to, to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. This is in 1 Peter 1.3.